that two-week period where these strikes were authorized, killing these three American citizens, we crossed a line there that will be so difficult to roll back. You don't think that the Cheneys of the world are watching what's happening under this administration and saying, thank God Obama's in office right now, because the next time we're there, liberals have nothing to say to us. 70% of self-identified liberals support the drone strikes. It drops only negligibly when, when the question is of a US citizen being the, the target. You, you see this incredible, I think intellectually dishonest defense of these policies by liberals that we, they would never, ever take that position if McCain had won the election in 2008. But because it's a popular Democratic president, this tr that people view as this transformative figure that brought an end to all of these wars and excesses, when in reality, the Iraq war plan that Obama implemented was Bush's plan to end the Iraq war. It was on his desk the day he took office. He escalated the war in Afghanistan, surged special operations night raids, gave JSOC unprecedented authorities, started bombing Somalia, started bombing Yemen, is contemplating now bombing Mali and elsewhere in North Africa has intensified the militarization of the war on drugs. The Republicans are having a field day, laughing all the way to the political bank, because when Jeb Bush comes into office, or Marco Rubio, or, or whoever, a whole lot of people will look like hypocrites if they stand up and say, well, I don't like this drone bombing American citizens overseas. Oh, really? What about the two-week period when your guy killed three American citizens, and won't even explain why, why a 16-year-old kid was killed? So, so for me, the issue here is, is not who Anwar al haki was, the first person killed in this sort of stream of killings. It's who, who we are. And if, and if we aren't willing to, to confront that, the reality of what it means that we have an incredible power grab that's gone on from the Bush era to the present of executive power in the United States, the use of state secrets privileges to try to stop any transparency efforts on the part of civil rights organizations, civil liberties organizations, media organizations, there has been a legitimization and a normalization of assassination as a central component once again, not that it hasn't been before in US history, by a Democratic president who has doubled down on some of the worst aspects of his predecessor's policies. We have a state of war right now that, contrary to President Obama's second inaugural address, is perpetual. His administration has ensured that, 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 that it's going to continue. It is a self-fulfilling prophecy. In Yemen and Pakistan, we're doing these things called signature strikes. I don't know if people have heard, heard of this, but we are bombing people that we, and we don't even know their names, we don't know their identities, we don't have any actual evidence that they're involved in terrorist plots. We have certain regions of Yemen and Pakistan where if you're a military-aged male and, and you're with a group of other military-aged males and someone in that group has been in phone contact with someone that we believe is a terrorist, they are preemptively labeled as terrorists and you can kill them with a drone bombing. And we're, we've done, we started in Pakistan, the authorities were expanded to Yemen. It's, it's a sort of grotesque form of pre-crime. It's like minority report, except we don't actually even know that they're going to commit a crime. We're basically killing people for who they might one day become. That's why Abdul Rahman al laki was killed. Whatever the explanation ends up being at the end of the day, whether it was a signature strike, or he was nearby someone, and therefore they determined that his life was not worth enough because that other person needed to die, he was killed for who he might one day become, whether it was because his name is al or because he just happened to be with a group of military-aged males. We may never know, but he was killed for who he might one day become. That's our policy right now in Yemen. That's our policy right now in Pakistan. It's not that there aren't awful, horrible, criminal people plotting to blow up U.S. airplanes. Of course there are. And to do all any number of horrid deeds to our society or wanting to kill Americans just because they're Americans, those threats exist. I want our nation to be safe. I want us to have a real national security policy. But what I, what I believe from years of traveling in these countries is that our drone strikes, our cruise missile strikes, our night raids are creating more new enemies than they are killing 